Well, we're going to start with the external features. Obviously, this structure right here with that the tongue is going through is the mouth. The external nares are the openings to the nose in the snout of the pig. Oracle refers to the ear. So this flappy bit of the ear, that is the pinna or oracle. The eye, obviously right here. And when you open the eye up, you can see this sort of cloudy membrane, which is called the nictitating membrane. And the function of that is to kind of help with the dust flying into the eyes of, of the animals. All right. Moving down, we have the mammary papillae. They'll be more prominent on females, but we also have it on males, the little bump kind of around the umbilical region. The umbilical cord would be this structure right here that's obviously been cut that connects the fetus to the mother. The anus is obviously going to be down here near the tail, and there's an opening that we can't really see. Oh, there we can. Right there. All right. Um, on a male, we can't see the female genital papillae, but we can see right here the male prepudial orifice, which is just below the umbilical cord. And in this dissected male, we can't see the scrotum, but the scrotum would be where the testes sit, and you would be able to pal palpate it with your hands kind of right here before the cuts have been made. Okay, so starting up near the mouth, um, we've got these large glands sitting right underneath the jaw. These are the salivary glands, and they're usually gonna be right next to the larynx, which is the voice box. The larynx will then lead down into the trachea. And the trachea, um, this has the heart removed, so behind where the heart would sit, you have um, the trachea bifurcating at the carina into the left and right main bronchi. A little bit higher up, you have the apical bronchus, which is just an extra sort of airway um, in the fetal pig. Okay, so moving to this different pig, we can see sitting right on top of where the trachea was, this sort of roundish, reddish gland. This is the thyroid gland. It's going to be right below the larynx and right sort of above all of the great vessels of the heart. So directly next to, on either side, bilaterally, the uh, the thyroid gland and the larynx, you're going to have this neurovascular bundle, which is going to consist of the common carotid artery, the internal jugular vein, and the vagus nerve. So the red is the artery, the blue is the vein, and the nerve is this little piece kind of next to everything right there. So vagus nerve can be recognizable up in the neck, traveling with the common carotid artery and the internal jugular vein. We know that it's internal based on the fact that it's traveling with the common carotid and a little bit lateral is the external jugular vein. So we've got on this side as well, common carotid artery, internal jugular vein, external jugular vein, and then going towards the upper extremity or the arm, we can recognize that as the subclavian. So subclavian artery, subclavian vein. So we only have two major arteries here, the common carotid and the subclavian, but we have three major veins. Subclavian vein, external, jugular vein, internal jugular vein. And all three of these venous structures are going to come together at the brachiocephalic veins to then join into the superior vena cava, which leads directly down into the heart. And this sitting right on top of the heart, um, and it's very large in the fetal pig, is the thymus gland. So thyroid is more superior up on top of the trachea. Thymus you're going to find sitting really on top of the heart itself. Um, and thymus is really interdigitated a lot with the um, pericardium. So the pericardium is the sac that the heart sits in. Okay, so the heart, we can see the, um, all of these venous structures, the internal, external jugulars, the subclavian come together as the brachiocephalic vein on the left and the right. They come together as the superior vena cava to then go into the heart, the right atrium of the heart. We can find the inferior vena cava if we move the heart away, kind of between the lobes of the lung coming from the liver. So here is our inferior vena cava, right here. And we can recognize the phrenic nerve as it travels between the lungs and the heart. So this nerve traveling down here, going straight into the diaphragm is the phrenic nerve. So be careful when you're talking about phrenic versus vagus. The vagus will be found up in the neck, right, in that neurovascular bundle with the common carotid and the internal jugular. 
Phrenic will be down, found down between the heart and the lungs to then pierce into the diaphragm. All right, so continuing with the vasculature. We have to actually move the lungs and the heart out of the way to be able to see the thoracic aorta. So it's called thoracic as it descends from the arch of the aorta near the heart. It's going to descend in the thoracic cavity right near the spine. And the second it crosses through the diaphragm, it's then called the abdominal aorta. Okay, so we can see the thoracic aorta. It would pierce through the diaphragm right here, but it's been cut away, so now it's called the abdominal aorta. And the abdominal aorta is going to give off a couple major branches that we care about. It's going to give off the renal arteries, which will go to the kidneys, and then it will continue down. And we can kind of see its branch point right here. Even though this is blue, this is actually an artery. So right here where the abdominal aorta branches to go into the lower extremity, the leg, that's where it's called the common iliac. So thoracic aorta, abdominal aorta, abdominal aorta will give off the renal artery to the kidney, and it will then branch in the pelvis into the common iliac arteries going into the legs. Okay, so um, on the heart, we've cut the superior vena cava so you can see this anterior most vessel, even though it is pinkish, this is your pulmonary artery because it is the anterior most and it's coming from the right side of the heart. Behind the pulmonary artery, you can see the arch of the aorta and that arch would then continue back, as we can see here, as the thoracic aorta. When we look at the anterior um, aspect of the heart, you can see this anteriormost vessel, this big pink guy coming out of the right side, which is your pulmonary artery. Behind that pulmonary artery, this is the ascending arch and then descending aorta. So this is your aorta behind it. We can also recognize it because it's got branches that are going upward into the head and upper extremity. So pulmonary artery is the anteriormost aortic arch is going to be behind and we can also see that the aortic arch is going to then continue as our descending thoracic aorta. So the umbilical vessels, we can recognize um, the umbilical vein is going to look like it's coming out from the liver. It's actually going to the liver and it was originally attached to this umbilical cord but it has to be cut to be able to actually open up the abdominal cavity systems, obviously heart and lungs, when we go down below the diaphragm, this is our diaphragm, we get into the abdomen and the abdominal organs which are digestive. So this very large one is the liver and remember it has the umbilical vein coming out. Kind of to the um, right of the liver, the left in your actual body, um, is this sort of baggy structure which is the stomach and at the distal most end of the stomach um, it's going to be harder to just see, but it's three-dimensionally thicker. So it's kind of thin right here and thicker in this little bit that I'm pinching. Just right there, that is the pyloric sphincter. Um, the pyloric sphincter is the last part of the stomach, and that's going to lead to the, the small intestine, which is this whole sort of bunchy part right here. And the small intestine is attached by mesentery. So this is all mesentery holding it down. From the small intestine, we then lead to the large intestine, and the large intestine is usually kind of greenish, but it's all the green parts. So this spiral bit, this greenish tube, and then this green tube as it's leading down into the pelvis. Um, when you cross into the pelvis, when you're kind of near the reproductive structures, it's now called the rectum. So going back up here, sitting right behind the stomach, this structure that's not very well demarcated and looks kind of like fat is the pancreas. So the pancreas is going to travel kind of right behind the stomach. This structure that's sort of long and snake-like and usually is found kind of right on the front like this is the spleen. This is going to get smaller in an adult but is very large in a fetal pig. So the spleen kind of sits outside the stomach and curves around the front. The pancreas sits directly behind and looks kind of like fat. The adrenal glands are going to be found not so much superior to the kidney, but a little more medial to the kidney. So the adrenal glands are these little kind of white, uh, worm-like structures. And the adrenal gland on the left side is actually going to look kind of continuous with the pancreas. So you have to be careful to separate them out and really know what you're looking at. The adrenal gland will be right next to the, uh, to the kidney. The pancreas will be closer up to the stomach. So we can see the adrenal gland on this side as well. Um, and let's move to this pig. The adrenal gland is really nice right here, and you can see it's like 
a little bit whitish, this whitish outline sitting right on top of, but really more so medial to the kidney. Um, from the kidney, we then have the ureter draining down, and it will ultimately drain into the bladder. You want to pause? Sure, you're missing the gallbladder too. Oh, sorry. And if we look on the underside of the liver, this greenish little bag-like structure is the gallbladder. Okay, so female reproductive. Um, we can always recognize the urinary bladder with the um, uh, umbilical. umbilical arteries <laughs> right next to it. So kind of in between these umbilical arteries, you're going to find the uterine horns, which look like these little squiggly bits right here, and at the end of the squiggly bit, the uterine horn, is the ovary. So ovary, uterine horn, where the uterine horns come together and they form this kind of a Y-shaped structure, that is the body of the uterus. So right here is the body of the uterus. As this continues down and it kind of goes between these uterine, or between these umbilical arteries, we have to kind of now look behind, we see the body of the uterus continuing down to then become the vagina. And so the vagina then leads down to this sort of structure that's giving off two parts. So this is the urogenital sinus, and the urogenital sinus will lead to the uro part, which is the urethra, which then leads to the bladder. Mm -hmm. And then the urogenital sinus will also then lead to the vagina, which we're kind of tracing our way back up to the body of the uterus, this Y shape, and then the uterine horns, the little squiggles, and then the ovaries at the end. All right, male reproduction. First, identify your bladder with your umbilical arteries next to it. The bladder will then lead into the urethra, and then the urethra will continue down. And here we'll be able to see urethral, bulbourethral glands on a different pig, but the urethra will continue down, and then it will turn upwards as the penis, and then that will lead to this um, prepudial orifice on the males. Here is the spermatic cord. The spermatic cord is going to then lead down to the testes, and the testes will be surrounded by this little sort of whitish bit called the epididymis. So spermatic cord, testes, epididymis. Okay, so um, urinary bladder leading down to the urethra on this um, more proximal part of the urethra right here near the bladder we can see this teeny tiny little gland right here which is the seminal vesicle the seminal vesicle is going to be on the part of the urethra that's closer to the urinary bladder and then as we go down um, further more distally along the uh, urethra you can see the bulbourethral gland so bulbourethral will actually be right next to the urethra and it'll be bigger and it'll be further down and a little bit deeper so urinary bladder, beginning of the urethra with our seminal vesicles on there. The ure urethra continues down as the bulbourethral glands are going to be right next to them. And there's one on each side, but we can, we're only looking at one side. And then it continues as the penis into the prepudial orifice right here near the umbilical cord.